Hello, it's me again. Okay, I think it's working. Okay, hello, welcome back to the um, TVO live stream session on the 7th of March. Theo, you're <laughs> right on time. Hello, thank you for being the first one. Um, Theo, go away, home. This is uh, <laughs> the most awkward thing about um, doing a live stream because every single thing I, every single thing I say when uh, arrive with you like I don't know half a minute later, so <laughs> I would always have to like be here wait for a bit before I can <laughs> receive a response. Uh, good to see. Uh, good to hear that you're well. I'm also good today, which is like great because I remember the last two live streams I've been sounding really <laughs> scratchy like a dog and uh, my throat has been um, sore and I've been coughing a lot and now I'm back and healthy and stronger than ever. <laughs> Hello Dawn. Well, um, you know, we have um, nine people watching my live stream right now and you all know me, you know my name. Uh, but I don't know who you are, so should we start uh, the session today with a little bit of introduction, please? And if you can, please tell me what's your, uh, what your name is and also where you're from uh, through the chat uh, section. And please, if you can, say that in Vietnamese. So I'm going to be waiting to hear from you. <laughs> Ciao, Steve. Steve, I remember you. You've been um uh, posting a few comments on our um, channel recently. All of them are really encouraging. So I remember you and thank you. Yeah, so please, oh, I'm going to uh, write it here. So anyone who joined later who missed uh, my question can uh, just type on. Okay, so um, let's start with some uh, questions that I received in my um, uh, in my video from the last live stream. Uh, I received two questions. Uh, one from oh, so silly. I <laughs> I open it ready for me to read out loud for you and then answer them. And then just earlier I turn it off. So give me one second. Okay, okay, so I have made, here it is, um, how and when to use mình, for example, ngôi nhà của tôi or nhà mình. I will turn on the board for you. Okay, um, when and how to use and the difference between Ming and Toy. Um, okay, the um, there is no rule on when and how to use Ming, you know, Ming refer to yourself. And tôi also refer to yourself. So basically, I can translate both of these as I in English. However, the, um, if I have to say the difference between mình and tôi, it is mình is a lot more casual. And I normally use mình when I talk to some friends that I um, don't... Um, either people who are the same age with me or people like on the street who I met for the first time I want to be polite because I'm 
not sure like how old they are and toy personally i never u- use toy in my lifetime yeah i think i can say that uh i know you must be um i guess you must be in a shop because like if you ask anyone what i is in vietnamese they're just gonna go straight at you and say toy and then you open any dictionary it's gonna be right away toy and toy seem to be like the most basic also the easiest uh vocabulary in english uh in vietnamese to refer to yourself however uh we don't really say toy unless in formal situation like I don't know, like when you're talking to your business partner in a meeting or when you're being interviewed on TV or like or like when you're at an older age. So using to- toy is okay. But for me, I would I never use toy in toy in daily life. So Ming, the difference is Ming is more casual and Ming is used for people who are around the same age with you. And toy is more formal, and toy can be used for anyone when you talk to anyone. Okay. Um. <clears throat> ah, the comments coming through. Um, from Paul. Uh, what is the location of your classes, and is it possible to apply for one session classes? Um. Um, we have we provide classes in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh, and Da Nang at the moment, and um, we don't we have uh, this is what people normally are confused about us. Like we are not a center, you know. We send teachers to you instead of making you come to us. So we are a group of teachers, and if you sign up for lessons, we we'll based on your level, your available schedule, and we arrange a suitable teacher for you. And then you two can arrange the location for the lesson yourself. For group lessons, however, we have partnership with a few cafe in town, and then they they reserve um a room, a separate room for us, and so we hold our um, group classes there. So in that case, that you can have privacy, and you know, in a in a, even though it's a cafe, but it will be quiet, and you have privacy. Um, no worries, Theo. <laughs> Your Typing is really good. I didn't uh, no um, error in your typing at all, so that's pretty impressive. And Steve, I speak with a northern accent. Um, bản thân, <coughs> bản thân the different. Uh, bản thân is a little bit different. It means myself or oneself. So it's not really, you don't really say bản thân when you say, oh, I, this and I, that. You say bản thân when, um, um, when you think like, when you're talking about yourself, for example, um, uh, em nghĩ bản thân em có rất nhiều <laughs> vấn đề. Uh, I think my, uh, I myself have a lot of problems or something like that. Or it's not just myself. If you're talking, if you're using the pronoun he, then it wouldn't become himself. If you're saying she, then it would become herself, you know? And, oops, sorry. Um, Ming can also mean we. Yes. <laughs> Chào kiệt. Nice to have you again. <laughs> um, Ming, when it means we, it's a shortening for bot Ming. So bot Ming means we, and sometimes people skip the bot and just say Ming instead. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> tự Ming. Uh, Theo, can you give me an example when you use Tự Ming? Because uh, we don't really use Tự Ming. It's Tự Ming doesn't mean myself or oneself. Oh, unless you're using the word tự. Okay. <clears throat> tự here, the word tự means when you do something. <coughs> when you do something on your role. For example, um, let me see if I... Uh, 
if I have something here that okay yeah I can take this as an example so you see this uh, business card for example I can say em tự <coughs> thiết kế cái uh, các visit này em tự thiết kế thiết kế means to, to design uh, and uh, business card in Vietnamese is called card visit I don't really know why or where it's from này ok em tự thiết kế card visit này mean I design this um, uh, business card myself which is not true um, but yes uh, and if you say em tự mình I can also say em tự mình thiết kế <coughs> card visit này so that also mean I design myself so in that case tự mình means you do something on your own but it doesn't mean myself okay um, <coughs> next question next question is from mm, uh, Stefan um, this is a very uh, <laughs> To be honest, I've been teaching Vietnamese for six years now and only, I don't know, like a year ago that I know how to answer this question, which is the uh, difference between những and yeah. um, yeah i to be completely honest i <laughs> i gotta tell you that when i saw this um question i was like uh oh because <laughs> this is one question that is really hard to explain and i have done so many research in the past and seems like even the Viet, even all the vietnamese linguistic uh linguistics uh, couldn't even agree on the one final explanation for this you know but here's the one that we found and actually i didn't find this uh but uh, a teacher in our group found this and i think it's pretty correct and it's applied for most situations there's still some ex um, exceptions but this see so far the def uh, definition and explanation that i accept um so the difference between nhung and cat uh, you know that um vietnamese words doesn't ch uh, don't change right we don't uh, add things like es or s or ed or in after a, a verb or a word like vietnamese word always stays the same so in order to refer to express the plural form of a word we add những or các before the noun <clears throat> yeah so if you put những or các before the noun then that noun you're referring to the plural form of that noun um so when do you use những and when do you use các uh, according to that uh, explanation that i mentioned that we found những is used for more specific okay <laughs> specific uh nouns like when you have let's say when you have a range or when you have a limit to the nouns okay the and cat you use cat when it's more general so that's why like if you're talking about people if um so there are 18 of you here and if I want to say hello I can say chào các bạn. So bạn here mean friends is general. I'm not saying uh hello to one person or something but um I say chào các bạn everyone general. Uh if let imagine that I'm older than all of you then I can also say chào các em. So depends on the pronoun. Uh, but if uh, I know that among 18 people that are watching this uh, video right now, there are five people who live in uh, Vietnam. 
uh, and I want to um, say, uh, say a special hello to especially those people who live in Vietnam. I can say chào những bạn sống ở Việt Nam. So, so you see earlier, các bạn is general all of you. So I you các, but when I want to be more specific, uh, only the those of you who live in Vietnam, then I say những. Okay. Um. Also, another example, you can say um. Uh. Okay. Các nước. Uh, uh, đón các nước đang chuẩn bị đón năm mới. Okay. Um, countries in the world are preparing to welcome the new year. So here, countries are general. All the countries, country in general, not in any specific area, not any specific country. So I will say các nước đang chuẩn bị đón năm mới. Um, but uh, if I say things like uh, người dân ở các um, thành phố lớn đang uh, sẽ được xem pháo hoa. Um, here. Uh, also, general pe people living in big cities, or oh, các thành phố lớn. So big cities also quite general. People living in big cities will get to see fireworks for the new year. So that's another example for các. And I will give you one more example on những. Oh, did I? I'm so silly today. I closed my explanation that I was open. Okay. Doesn't matter. I will think of another example for you. Okay. So, người dân ở các thành phố lớn sẽ được xem pháo hoa. This is general, right? I can make this similar sentence but in a more specific uh, way and then I will use những instead. Okay, here's another uh, example. The meaning almost exactly the same. Oh, you must be missing some bit. Okay, is it better? Okay. Người dân ở những tỉnh gần Hà Nội sẽ đến Hà Nội xem pháo hoa. People who live in the in um, people from towns near Hà Nội will come to Hà Nội to watch the fireworks. So here it's a bit uh, more specific now. Uh, the towns or the cities that are close to Hanoi will go to Hanoi. So in this case, then I can use những. Um, however, remember that this is only my general explanation for the difference between những and các. I can list many other examples that it goes, you know, like are uh, exception, like not necessarily follow this rule. So you should just, you know, um, this is one of the things that you have to learn by saying it, make a mistake, learn from it, and then remember which situation you use what, which word, okay? Um, okay. Um, Vladimir? Uh, <laughs> yes, you finally caught me live. Uh, your question, when do I use những người and con người? Uh, the, different the difference is uh, những người is people again the plural form of person and con người literally uh, normally mean refer to human uh in general not mm, you're not saying some people like those people but you're talking about the like human and monkeys or human and animals so con người và động vật so that's the difference uh, and người ta, người ta normally just mean they, you know, when we said, um, uh, when I was 
small and then let's say if I wear something when I live with my parents and if I wear something that look funny uh, out on to go out then my parents can tell me oh uh, mặc thế này người ta cười cho <laughs> say this make, make me miss uh, living with my parents but mặc thế này người ta cười cho đấy <laughs> Uh, mặc is to wear, the verb to wear. Thế này mean like this. Người ta, so people, cười cho đấy, would laugh at you. Mặc thế này người ta cười cho đấy. So người ta here refer to people, what is not you, not yourself, you know. Like other people. You do this, other people gonna judge you. If you do that, other people gonna laugh at you. So that's um, how we use the word người ta. Mm. Chào bố card. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of Taiwanese here today. <clears throat> uh, that is not um, the question from Kiệt. That is not a Vietnamese related question, but yes, uh, mình rất thích trà sữa chân châu. <laughs> I went to um, um, bubble milk tea has been in uh, Vietnam for so long and I never really care about it that much but then I went to Taiwan for four days for holiday and after I got back the first two weeks after I got back I had uh, bubble milk tea every single day I'm serious like every single day for two weeks were well, pretty crazy <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> this is <here, laughs> um, a strange <laughs> question. The difference between <laughs> Sam Sơ and Biến Thái. Uh, uh, make me wonder <laughs> what made you ask me this question. Like, <laughs> uh, in what situation did you receive these words that you have to ask? But Sam Sơ and Biến Thái, okay. You know, uh, funny was always um, always more always more interesting, and uh, you remember them more. So, um, um, so what was your question again? The difference, um, The difference is Sam Sir is the verb when you you know when you're being a pervert and when you touch someone, then the verb of touching someone in a pervert way, you know, not in an accident way, is uh, called Sam Sir. Um but Bien Thai is an adjective. So the main difference is this one is a verb. And this one adjective. Um to call those people, you know, like call those sick, pervert people. So yeah, that's the mm, most uh, simple explanation of the difference. Uh, Steve Williams, uh, the difference between thing and ill. Um, I received this question before, and I re um, and I explained it in my last live stream already. So if you uh, go back to my previous one, then you will be able to see it. Oh yeah, <laughs> Theo already answered that for me. Uh, what does đi ăn khuya mean? And when and how I can uh, use it? Mm. Hello Rico, hello Alan Bart. Um, I'm a beginner, I want to expand my noodle house vocabulary. <laughs> okay, if you can be a bit more specific, I will give you all the vocabulary that you need. Okay, uh, đi ăn khuya. Đi ăn khuya is a very handy, uh, handy uh, phrase. Đi ăn, simple, I'm sure all of you know. Đi ăn, go eat. Khuya means late at night. So đi ăn khuya means when you go eat late at night. Okay? Uh, if you... 
if um, you see me posting a uh, video at let's say one in the morning you can ask me sao lan thức khuya thế sao lan thức khuya thế means why why are you staying so staying up so late so thức is to stay up khuya late so why are you staying up so late okay <laughs> Tom. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So so far, that's the questions that I uh, have in the top chat. So I'm gonna go back to the questions that um people sent me. Be um before I do this live stream, we only have one more, and I think um you're gonna find this one uh, really useful because uh it's very common, but not so many people know it. So this is a question that I received through email from Sang Workman um, and she asked um, when to use the word đã and does đã has uh, another meaning which means already. So this is a really really good question. I'm going to explain why. First of all, uh, if you are like, I don't know, elementary or above, I'm sure you know that um, đã is the word used for past tense, right? So I can say em đã em đã xem phim Iron Man rồi. I had um, watched Iron Man already. So this is the reason why that um, she asked if đã also mean already because um, that chưa is the structure for present perfect questions, right? Uh, if you watch, oh yeah, if you watch my latest video uh, about question have yet, then you know that the structure is đã chưa. So to answer this question, you can say đã here is optional. You can say đã something rồi or chưa. So, an example, um, anh đã xem, uh, or bạn đã xem video mới nhất của Tiếng Việt ơi chưa? Have you seen, um, have you watched uh, Tiếng Việt ơi's newest video? And I can say, oh, tôi đã xem rồi, tôi đã xem rồi. Or you can just say, tôi xem rồi. So you can skip đã there. Or, tôi chưa xem, I haven't watched it. So, in this case, đã is just a grammar point for the question already. That's why she confused it with um, already. Uh, and in other, um, another meaning of đã that not many people know is when you put đã at the end, of a sentence. When you put it at the end of the sentence, then it means you will do whatever it is you put before that first. Okay? So let's let's say um, someone okay. Um someone asked me um a question. Let's say you ask me a question, you comment and post a question there on the top chat. And then I um, will say, oh, chờ tôi trả lời câu hỏi này đã. Okay. Chờ tôi. So I can say, oh, wait for me to finish answering this question first. And then I will move to your question. Or... If you say, um, remember um, my, uh, there's a video, my video about Tết, uh, Tết của Lan. And in that video, if you notice at um, the beginning of the video, I posted a note saying, in this video, um, we use uh, a lot of uh, vocabulary that were mentioned in my previous video. So uh, you should watch that one first before you watch this one. So in Vietnamese, I can say, À, các bạn nên xem video trước đã rồi xem video này ok 
that makes sense you guys should watch the last video first and then watch this video so this is um, a function of that that not uh, too many people know about so um yeah there you are okay wow <laughs> a lot of comments why i was um <laughs> explaining that give me one second to read all the comments to see if i have any more questions <cười> Hà Nội đêm nay mát lắm, thời tiết đẹp lắm Kiệt ơi Ok um, How uh, from a beginner that we i think is it your first live stream it, it, it is welcome and i think your name is alan bart <laughs> uh so for your question how you say it's delicious and goodbye um it's delicious okay i'm curious if you go to a restaurant and you have something so good and you want to tell the cook or the manager or the waiter that it's so delicious how are you want to say that? Let's see how many ways you can think of to to tell them that it's really delicious. Okay, Tom, uh, em sẽ trả lời câu hỏi của Alan Bird trước đã. Sau đó sẽ trả lời câu hỏi của anh nhé. Yeah. <cười> Still waiting for you to tell me how you say it's so delicious because they are. I want to see how creative and um, you are and how varied your answer is. Nó rất ngon. Mm. Anything else? Không cần xin lỗi thôi. Ngon quá. Ok. Oh, chào ba Gary. <cười> so, so far, we have nó rất ngon. Use of, the use of rất. Um, <cười> another question, we have ngon quá. Ok. So, use quá. Anything else? Nothing so far. Um, did any one of you watch my video on uh, five most common mistakes? <laughs> if you watch that video already, then you would know that um, uh, a lot of foreigners confuse between uh, rất and quá. Uh, rất only um, trời đất ơi <laughs> ngon lắm. <laughs> That's another way to say it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, trời đất ơi is the same for those who don't know. Trời đất ơi, trời đất ơi is the same with a uh, um, ôi giời ơi. Okay, so I'm gonna start explaining now. Um, we have rất, and then we we have quá. What is the difference? If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna quickly explain again. Rất is your comment or your opinion of something. Uh, when something has already passed but quá after an adjective is your more like you're feeling your emotion of something at the moment that it is happening so i would normally again this is what we normally use it but uh it's not like the strict rule you know it's not like if you use it differently it's gonna make you wrong or something it's just like generally it's how we use it so if I'm eating something, let's say I'm eating a bowl of pho, and it's so good, and I say, oh, ngon quá. So I'm eating it, and I'm finding it really good, so I say, ngon quá. And then later on, when I finish the pho, um, the waiter came to uh, clean the dishes and asked me, how was it? And I say, oh, rất ngon. 
So in that case, because I already finished it, I'm giving my opinion about it now. So I will say rất ngon, very good, or very delicious. If I'm eating it, then I will say, oh, so delicious. Because at that moment, it is my feeling, my emotion. At the moment, something is happening. So um, that's the difference between rất and quá. Trời đất ơi, ngon lắm is also uh, a correct way and a very like expressive way to say, oh, oh my God, it's so good. But today, I want to teach you another um, adverbs of degree. Uh, kind of my favorite one because it's, you know, quite extreme. It's very funny, so it makes people laugh. Uh, it is ngon plus dã man. So, uh, don't know if any of you know what dã man means, but dã man is a plural. Uh, sorry, <laughs> dã man is an uh, is a adjective for cruel or evil or something like that. Um, how would you use dã man? Okay, um, I stand up, uh, and then my friend removed my chair, and when I sit down, I fall on the floor, then I can tell my friend, like, oh, dạ man thế, like, you're so cruel. But when you put dạ man after ngon or an adjective, then it uh, means like, mm, let's, it means like, freaking, it's freaking delicious or it's stupidly delicious or cruelly delicious. So it's just like a very extreme way of um, uh, expressing that adjective. And it's also not just extreme, but funny also. So when you say that, you kind of guarantee you have a laugh from uh, whoever is listening to you, you know? <laughs> so yeah, for Alan Bird, uh, that's how you say uh, so delicious. Uh, <laughs> depends on um, the situation you can use a normal um, common way, or you can use this uh, extreme way if it was extremely good. Uh, and back to Tom's question. Um, okay, that's um that's a very good um observation, Tom. Uh, tại sao người dân ở các thành phố lớn được xem pháo hoa? With the được. Okay, I'm gonna type those two sentences again. Và người dân I'm just gonna skip the middle bit because it's not important uh, Sẽ đến Hà Nội Xem pháo hoa So Tom question is Why is there được in the first sentence But not được in the second sentence The reason is <laughs> I just saw a squat farmer comment. Yes, it's another way uh, to say, uh, to express um, it very extremely. But make sure to um, be careful when you use that, uh, who you use it to, you know. Make sure it's not like a nice old lady or someone like that. Um, uh, where was I? Okay, so được. Uh, I'm actually gonna make a video about this soon. Is a passive voice in Vietnamese. So um, the reason why I use được in the first sentence, people in big cities will get to see pháo hoa. So in Vietnamese, even though in English you, it's not a passive voice sentence, but in English uh, it is. Uh, in Viet. What did I just said? In English, it's not a passive voice sentence, but in Vietnamese it is because, um, you know, getting to watch fire, well, it's not up to us, it's up to the government, whether the government decide to spend money on like, you know, doing fireworks for the city or not. So because it's not up to us in Vietnamese, it is a passive voice sentence. And được is a word used for passive voice, and when it a positive thing 
uh, different from B. You also use B for passive voice, but for negative things. So watching fireworks is a positive thing, right? That's why we use do. So people in big city will get to see pháo hoa. Uh, and the second question, I didn't put được there because it's not a passive voice sentence. People in um, the around Hanoi will go to Hanoi to watch pháo hoa. This is completely active. People will go to Hanoi themselves and to watch pháo hoa. So that's why no be no được. Okay. Tom ơi, anh đã hiểu chưa? Um, do you have any specific advice on how I can improve my listening ability? Um, okay, for this question, I don't have a specific advice because I think um, this one will... Hơi hiểu à? Nếu có câu hỏi thì hỏi em nữa nhé. Um, uh, I think uh, this one apply for everyone really. The only way to improve your listening skill is just to, you know, put yourself out there, like put yourself in the environment that people speak Vietnamese to you and then you just have to listen to a lot in you know, order to get better. Um, the difficult thing for you is uh, we don't have a lot of um, listening materials in uh, Vietnamese yet. So that might be difficult for you to practice at home. But you live in Vietnam, so you have to, you know, just go out, try to talk to people. Or if you are shy and don't want to talk to people, then try listen to what people are speaking around you and then see how much you can understand. Um, get a teacher, get a Vietnamese teacher, I would say. Uh, that's the only um, advice I have so far. Like, I really don't think there's any, you know, shortcut to to get better in learning a language because um, it is difficult learning a language. So yeah, just have to work hard, not giving up, practice, you know. Um, okay, so um, I think that's all for today. <laughs> Cảm ơn Kiệt. Yes, ngày mai là quốc tế phụ nữ. So, um, I don't know. I, I always thought that only Vietnamese people celebrate uh, uh, Women's Day. But apparently in Taiwan, you also celebrate Women's Day. <laughs> uh, let me know if America or your countries are also celebrate that. Because, yeah, I'd be really surprised. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. Um, next one. I'm thinking, seems like there are a lot of people who speak, a, you know, have a quite good level of Vietnamese here. So what do you say um, if next live stream I will do maybe half of it in Vietnamese? So yeah, that would be um, <laughs> a chance for you to practice your listening skill also. Let me know. Uh, please comment now and let me know if you would like that or do you think it would be better if I speak in Vietnamese and just explain grammar uh, i'm not sure yet so yeah please comment um <laughs> cảm ơn vì bông hoa bô khai or bô card <laughs> um yeah here's the awkward moment again when i'm sitting here waiting for the comments Yeah, John, good mean the uh, speaking Vietnamese in my next live stream is good. Maybe I will just try that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so okay. I think what I'm going to do is maybe have 15 minutes in Vietnamese uh, and after that we'll switch back to English so other people who are at a slightly lower level can also join in the section, okay? Uh, oh, 
book I got the last question. Um, the rule. Um, Leo, uh, that's a good answer, but there's another way and uh, also slightly more common way. Uh, I don't know if, it's, um, if there's a difference between the south or and the north, but in the north, and what I normally say, whenever you have a zero in tens this uh, position, you call it a link. So this one will be sáu trăm linh một, or not just you know the tens position is not only the second uh, number from the last one, but also let's say if I have two hundred and five, four hundred and two, okay, um, two hundred and five thousand four hundred and two. So this see this number is a ten uh, this no, zero is a ten position but this zero is also the ten position it's a ten thousand so that one would also be a link hai trăm linh năm nghìn bốn trăm linh hai okay yeah so um, okay i think that's all um thank you again for joining my live stream today and i will see you in um, two weeks on the um, 21st of march and i might be away that week uh, i'm not it's not confirmed yet i might be away so i might not be able to do the live stream but if i can't then I will make sure to, you know, to arrange someone else from the Met Ơi to do that for you. Uh, so no way, just be online that time and someone will be there and explain all your questions again. Uh, remember, if you have any more questions, just comment in this video. Uh, I will answer in my next live stream. And if you would like to, you know, help us donate um, to TVO team and help us, you know, have the budget to make a better video, better quality, better sound quality, then you can go on uh, the link in the description, our um, Patreon, and um, in you can get a lot of benefits for uh, donating for our channel also, you know, so check it out, have a look, check it out. Okay, so uh, cảm ơn mọi người và gặp mọi người trong hai tuần nữa. Tạm biệt. <cười>